Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our creative lab, Awakening the Souls of Our Nations. This creative lab is an ongoing cooperation of the 2025 initiative with the Hekal group from Jerusalem and the Klang Shali group from Germany. Thank you for joining us on this day of distribution of the Sagittarius Festival. Over to you, Uta. Thank you, Alexander. And hello, everyone. Welcome also from me to our Nations Lab that we convene every month in order to practice to come into our function as part of the Ajna Center of our planet. We learn here together the skills which may be required for the personnel of a soul guided Un United Nations sometime in the future. And we experiment with applying these skills to some situation each time on the planetary agenda. So today we will practice continuing the practice that we did last month or the several months already behind us of becoming mental workers, as DK calls it. And today we will focus on the second task, which according to him, he formulates it like this, the dissipation of the murky clouds of half vitalized indefinite thought forms which surround our planet. Dissipation of the murky clouds. We have been given different techniques from both uh, DK and also Master M for dissipating murky clouds. And uh, I think it would be a good idea maybe in later sessions to, to have a closer look at them to get deeper into this. Today, for, for a beginning, um, we want to start with Asajoli's approach to, to this kind of work. Um, and he suggested not to attack something negative directly, but to counteract it by cultivating the opposite quality. So the opposite of a murky cloud of half vitalized indefinite thought forms is a lighted, clearly defined, vitalized thought form. So today we want to experiment with consciously building such a thought form. So we take one step further. We had last month, we were um, experimenting in our council chamber, uh, building a geometrical shape together out of mental matter. Um, we constructed first a five pointed star and then a six pointed star. And this time we will not do something with uh, geometrical, but we will um, build a thought message and vitalize it. So for today, we were thinking of practicing with a short sentence, which we have on our Hechal website from the very beginning, uh, which we could use as a counter statement, which almost is like a uh, a shield or a safeguard that we put on uh, when we face a dark cloud, especially a dark cloud of war. So here is uh, this little sentence. On the recognition of the sacredness of each person and the oneness of humanity, peace is built. on the recognition of the sacredness of each person and the oneness of humanity, 
Peace is built. Let us take a moment with this sentence, kind of stepping into this vibration, taking it on. Yeah, and coming into our inner stillness, taking a deep breath, being well grounded in our body, and standing in the love and in the freedom. Of us as soul. Now turn our attention to our thought life. Observe for a moment the various currents happening in our mind at the moment. And allowing now our mental field to become clear and focused. And in preparation for entering our council chamber, let us fine tune our vibration further, expanding now our awareness to a planetary perspective. Expanding our mind to embrace this whole planet, this planet as a whole. And at the same time, calibrating our heart to the will to love, which is all embracing. And we consecra consecrate ourselves to serve humanity. Now, letting ourselves be drawn to the beautiful building set in nature, which we by now know very well. and entering into the quiet and clear and spacious chamber. Taking our places in geometric order. Sense the atmosphere in the chamber, the geometrical harmony. Being aware of each other's presence in the circle and of the space that we hold together.
In the center of the chamber, let us visualize the flame of our combined sustained will to love. and let our hearts tune to it. Holding together this space of intent, sustained love. As we hold this, we are also becoming aware now of the mental space of the council chamber. A calm, clear, lighted space. It vibrates to the rate of the Ajna center of the planet. And through this vibration, we are linked with our fellow world workers in all nations. And we are holding this telepathic field stable so that the higher forces may play on it and that we may discern the very subtle ethereal currents within it, becoming ever more sensitive to this mental matter We notice the presence of high deva beings holding this space with us. And let us now as a practice in building together in mental matter, introduce into our mental field the following thought impulse. Every human life is sacred. Every human life is sacred. Let us hold this idea sharp and defined, grasping the significance of this statement with our will, making it fiery. Every human life is sacred. And let the group mind now respond to it, generating thoughts which embellish, which substantiate the spark. Every human life is sacred. Visualize the mental matter forming around this fiery spark. Seeing a thought form taking shape in our mental space. We 
expressing the sacredness of every human life. And let now the group heart respond to this mental shape, nurturing it, vitalizing it with our purest feelings. Every human life is sacred. Let us keep it vitalized and save it now in readiness for, for later use. Putting this thought form to the side now, releasing our concretizing effort and for another moment just opening ourselves to the presence of our ashramic co-workers who stand back of this nation's lab work. Taking just a minute for tuning with their vibration and filling ourselves with their love and guidance. and gradually returning to our usual consciousness, taking a moment to note down any impressions. Okay, so this exercise has sensitized us to the power of thought that may, we may wield as a group when we synchronize our thought currents and build something together in mental matter. So let us now explore a bit. What is a murky cloud of half vitalized indefinite thought forms? It's actually a conglomerate of half thought through mental impulses, which have attracted emotional matter of a low vibration, which results in karma manasic mess. And when this mess gets highly charged through suffering, it causes an inflammation 
infection in the emotional body of humanity. And this is, yeah, this ill-shaped Kama Manasic matter is explosive. And when it reaches a certain level of agitation, of vitalization of the wrong, way, wrong kind, then there's no way other than precipitating onto the physical plane as physical violence, and then we have war. DK told us that the door where evil dwells has not been fully set, sealed after the world war. And in fact, the dark forces have been working underground since then and have rebuilt their strength again. And they use our murky clouds for their ends. The murky clouds are, are ours, but then they add their, their force to them. And the good thing about the present world crisis is that so much is now coming out into the open and becoming conscious, coming into the consciousness of the people. So we have now a chance to consciously address our old toxic stuff and cleaning it out and thereby we remove the ground for evil to take root. So let us now take a look at one dark cloud, which DK has specified, and it's the one hanging over the Middle East and parts of Eastern Europe. He says, in the maps which are to be found in the archives of the spiritual hierarchy, the entire area of the Near East and Europe, Greece, Yugoslavia, Turkey, Palestine, the Arab states, Egypt and Russia are under a heavy overshadowing cloud. Can that cloud be dissipated by the right thinking and planning of Great Britain, the United States, and the majority of the United Nations? Or must it break in disaster over the world? Will it present a task too hard for correct handling by that inexperienced disciple, humanity? He wrote this 75 years ago, and a lot has changed since then. But with the present wars in Ukraine and the Middle East, we must see that this inexperienced disciple humanity has so far not handled this situation, and the dark cloud is not dissipated. And we know that each one of us and each nation is a participant in this. We are co-creators of this murky stuff. At the same time, we are victims of its effects still. And we are potential agents of its dissipation. So let's see now what we can do from our council chamber about such a cloud.
we will assume our prepared thought message as a counter vibration to it, very humbly as a first humble experiment. Let us endeavor to, to, to be in non-judgmental detachment as we do so. So let us reconvene in our council chamber. Which is situated midway between humanity and hierarchy. We are aware of our co-workers in the ashram standing with us as we prepare for this observation. Our hearts are firmly aligned with the flame of the will to love in the center of the council chamber. And our minds are calm and focused. From this stable high observation point, we work and never move. So let us now look at our planet, holding her in our loving awareness. Perceiving the continents and humanity being spread out over these continents ordered into nations. And let us now in our inner eye locate the dark cloud hanging over the Middle East and the Eastern part of Europe. Observing it from above, we stay in our council chamber, getting a first sense of its shape. And having a first discerning look Observing its characteristics as far as we can. For example, its texture, density, maybe various densities, areas of various currents. Just taking a moment to observe remaining detached. What is this dark cloud that is still hanging there?
Okay. Refocusing for a moment back in our council chamber, asserting our own vibration. And establishing now, bringing into focus the thought message that we have prepared. Every human life is sacred. Let us assume now this vibration, keeping the significance of it fiery and clear. This message standing as a peace commanding presence facing the dark cloud, affirming every human life is sacred. Holding up this vibration, this message. Standing steady. Being aware of doing this together setting up a counter vibration. Every human life is sacred. And now, let us withdraw our attention from the dark cloud back into the council chamber. Releasing now all effort and taking a moment just to rest and breathe in each other's presence. opening to the love of our elder colleagues in the ashram, soaking in it for a moment. Letting now any psychic effects of this observation just be washed away. and tightening a bit the contours of our personal aura, re-establishing the solidity of our own sense of self, grounding, grounding, and coming back into the here and now, Taking a minute to note down our impressions, before we open the floor to our sharing.
Okay. So let us now open the floor for our sharing. Hello, this is Helen from Israel. What a meditation. Um, this new vibration on the recognition of the sacredness of each person and the oneness of humanity. It was like uh, I had a, a vision of the thought form that was uh, that had a form, a physical form. It was not very geometrical or anything like that, but it uh, began imprinting itself on the growing geometrical order of the council chamber. So there was a, a, a like a movement of forms. Um, and uh, in the second meditation, um, the dark cloud, I must say that uh, the council chamber is such a good grounding space. And it, it, it helps me at least uh, um, having a certain perspective and, and being aligned in, uh, aligned in this safe space. I saw the dark clouds covering the area. It was a kind of Middle Ages energy. Mm. Modernity is mixed and embedded in the dark ages. There's such a gap between the, this is what I saw in the meditation, this gap between the advanced, uh, the advanced technology that seems to be very threatening um, and the consciousness of uh, Piscean age in its extreme expression, dark and polarized. Hmm. And uh, this uh, sentence, every human life is sacred, was like a meme uh, piercing yeah. a dark cloud, like a uh, a human truth piercing this uh, um, this blinding and and uh, and uh, suffocating glamour. So thank you, Uta, and thank you all mm. for holding. Thank you. Thanks for this observation. Middle Ages mixed with modern age. Mm. I can share. Uh, this is Alexandra from Ukraine. Originally from Ukraine, now I live in the United States and um, when I first time read this passage about the dark cloud above the Middle East and parts of Russia, I could really relate to this. 
growing up in um, Soviet Union, and especially when I started traveling, going outside of my country, I could recognize the difference. And um, interesting enough that uh, that difference uh, I also can feel when I come to Israel, that sense of intensity, intensity in the air. I don't feel it in Eastern Europe, so it's I think it's somewhat exaggeration and uh, misrepresentation of the quote Uta. It doesn't say about Eastern Europe, it says about Russia. And um, I really feel it in Russia. Every time I go to Russia, it's very strongly present there. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, and I feel it's, at least in the Soviet Union, it was related to uh, exactly that uh, loss of respect to human life. Through the turbulent history that uh, uh, Soviet Union had, where millions of uh, lives were lost to the war, but almost the same amount of lives were uh, lost to as a result of totalitarian regimes persecutions where millions of people were rotten in gulag and that's exactly that extracting human life for the purpose of idea mm. or disregarding the value of human life or any high idea, that's what creates that sense of darkness and heaviness. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's uh, Kind of common perception of people coming from the Eastern Bloc, from Russia, from Ukraine, that they're quite gloomy and not very smiling. In a way, it's that part of that. It's that it's sense of the pressing dark cloud, like like a like as a as a heavy rock is hovering above. It's actually a very etheric sense. And another thing is that um, it, this idea has been like shared uh, at the Middle East vigil a few weeks ago about that in a way it's a, it's it's a, it's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a role of people who are outside of the region to hold the vision of dissipating that heaviness. And that's, uh, I very much resonate with that because people who are inside that space that's covered with dark cloud is very difficult to, first of all, recognize, recognize that something can be done with that they feel the presence, but very little can be done from being inside. And so therefore it's why well, it's important to uh, the focused intention of people who live in other areas and who are not um, haven't, do not hold the heaviness of that Kama Manasic uh, murkiness. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> I know that also when um, <clears throat> as a child we would sometimes travel from West Germany over the border to East Germany, the air 
seemed more heavy, more, everything seemed much more gray. So I wonder, mm -hmm. this is what you said, this etheric, the, the etheric sense of this, of this dark cloud. It's interesting that in Israel, because of all this light, there's so much physical light, it's different. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, definitely now we can feel this, this dark cloud there too. And you, what you said, misrepresentation. <clears throat> I mean, this is what, what DK said, huh? Well, the, the full quote, he talks about uh, uh, parts of Russia and he uh, in uh, goes in, like in other places, he talks about these things that's been happening in Russia and uh, that creates this heaviness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was this sentence. Maybe I can can read the the what uh, the sentence before the 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 quote that we showed is. I would have, I would have you bear these points in mind while you investigate the world picture. This picture is taking shape and warrants recognition. It involves the Jews, who are not a nation but a religious group, the Near East and Russia. But again, this is 75 years ago, he wrote this. The same sense of heaviness, actually, I also recognize, I feel in parts of the United States and traveling across the country, some uh, depressed regions, they have that uh, also sense of this same etheric heaviness. Mm. This is Andrea from the United States. Thank you, Uta, again and again and again for all that you bring to all of us in this ongoing meditation. It's extraordinary how <clears throat> it has changed and grown and expanded and, and now almost focalized, which brings such a new potency to it. Um, the vision that I saw was not what I looked for. <clears throat> I looked for a dark, thunderous, cumulus cloud over that oval area <clears throat> that you showed us in the map, and I didn't see that. I saw no shape. I saw a disjointed tangled, chaotic, sharp, harsh lines, lines of light, not really, lines, thorns. And interestingly, when I wanted them to be black or gray, they were red. And 
there was some degree of them that were sort of colorless, but the predominance of them were red. And there was something that came into my head that was about the red of the root chakra and that there is a stuckness in that root chakra, that there is a blockage in, in being able to rise beyond that redness. But when we then invoked the recognition of the sacredness of each person and the oneness of humanity, there became this feeling of an an exul an exulsion um, an inhalation and an an exhaling. Um, it was it brought a calm. It immediately brought color, a lot of color, um, into those same <clears throat> formless pieces. And there was sort of a more weaving together in a perfect pattern. There was, it was almost as if a conductor was raising his wand to, to take all of these notes that really weren't auditory, but were more visual in color. And, and to weave them together and to create a s symphony of, of oneness that had order and organization and, a, and an opportunity to flow in a way that was not there in the disjointedness of that cloud. So thank you so much for this. Oh, Marco is trying to raise her hand. We just unmute her. Marco, you're Thank unmuted. You. <clears throat> Thank you, Daniela. This is Margot calling in from the west coast of Canada on Vancouver Island, which is very far removed from the overshadowing cloud that uh, we've been looking at. And I've just returned from, from six weeks in Europe and noticed such a difference when I returned here. my experience in the first meditation was that the radiance through our heart of, of our ashramic co-workers and the purity and clarity of the growing substance of the field surrounding the message that every human life is sacred as the words were repeated a column of the frequency of this thought form began forming which was embraced and strengthened by our elders. And further to what others have shared about this cloud and gloominess and sharp lines. Um, and when Andrea mentioned red, it occurred to me that the amount of blood that has been shed, I also saw this, this archaic, uh, not archaic, but um, mid thought forms of the Middle Ages as part of that cloud and um, but getting back to the, where the blood is being shed and the same thing in pockets in in the americas and no doubt other parts in the world where a lot of blood has been shed and i, I wonder if that's not also con contributing to the cloud that the earth itself the soil itself needs to be purified. Um, mm. Not only the gray cloud hanging over. Mm. 
Yeah, that's something to to experiment with how to clean, to pr purify the earth, the ground underneath that. Mm -hmm. I think wherever wherever we are in the world that that we are living this and particularly around the statement that was repeated over and over again about the sacredness of life and recognizing the sacredness of each human life and the oneness of humanity that as we live those words wherever we are and we're grounded it's it's like um in in the Jerusalem meditation, bringing it down through the trees, right in, into the work, into the roots, into the into the earth. Mm -hmm. Did you have a sense of um, this? Um, you know, when we when we um, when we hold such a such a thought form, um, that it is like a protective shield because that's that was my experience I, I i i take it on almost like an armor i i experienced it as a as a substantiality of of light of white light of um yes it, there there's certainly a protective quality to it, um, I. Uh, but that that was surrounding the whole council chamber. I didn't have a sense that that I was personally. It was just within the the um, within the council chamber that was held. It was protected. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was also grateful that you um, brought us back and and uh, I forget how you worded it, but the um, becoming aware of of the what shape of shape of our fe one's field uh, that wasn't how you worded it, but I found mm -hmm. that was interesting because I was quite um, expanded and it helped to to bring it all down and ground right here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, yes, I find this very important after such an observation, especially of something that is uh, that is heavy, to bring ourselves back, to really make a point of it, to bring ourselves back and tightening the contours, tightening the aura, so we don't, we are not a sponge. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, hello, this is uh, Judy from the United States. Uh, thank you, uh, Uta. Uh, I think uh, when we were together in the council chamber, uh, the piece that was really interesting in terms of the geometric was that um, the personage, the energy that was next to uh, me to the left to the right it was almost like a triangle but it was a ripple and um, so then the there was this positive glow that went from me and it connected on either side of me and it went around the whole chamber and so it, it was a, a weaving together uh, that happened almost instantaneously and so it became a real uh, sense of a oneness and the thought that uh, every human life is sacred just became uh, there needs to be relationship with all of life and all of life is sacred. 
And since all of life is sacred, all of life needs to be treated as sacred. And so it was with that thought, if you will, that uh, we went into the dark cloud. And as, as soon as I came against, and it wasn't I, it was this field uh, that I participated in, there was the real sense of other. And it, it almost was hard to touch individual life because the thought was every human life is sacred. But instead of human life, it was a, a block. Uh, it almost didn't individuate. And it was a block of mistrust. And all I could feel in that block was other, uh, mm -hmm. rather than that sense of oneness. And as a lighted group, we really try to impress into it. And the edges melted, uh, but not a whole lot. And the cloud became a little lighter, but it remained a darkened cloud that hung together. Um, and so it was real clear that it was really difficult to penetrate, and um, that it was there was this sense that it was going to take a lot of continuous small bursts of effort uh, because it was important in a way to back away from this cloud and to basically stand uh, together in, in a lighted sense again. It was almost like that helped me to breathe because as I was really almost pushing against this cloud to try to have light penetrate it, it was, uh, it was surprisingly hard to do. And it wasn't impossible, but uh, there was that real sense that this is going to take time. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah, Edie, thank you for this uh, very practical, uh, um, you know, hands-on uh, observations. It really matches also my my observation. Uh, also, when we do the Middle East vigil, these, as you say, continuous small bursts of effort. It's this these continual waves. We cannot stay in it long. Uh, we have to each time do it, do this work, and then come back into the council chamber or into our normal life, and then come back. Um, this this rhythmic pulsing of it. Yeah, and yes, it is going to take time and perseverance. But I also have a sense, you know, when we when we come up with with a counter um, counter vibration. And this is just one example. Every human life is sacred. Yes, it, it, it could. There could be many other other uh, uh, vibrations that we can set up together. Um, if but when we stay with it like we we have worked so long now with the will to love um um, um, subst um gaining substance so that it th this becomes then uh something practical to 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 hold to hold counter to that block of mistrust mm -hmm. and then we can a little bit feel okay yes that interacts somehow that lightens a bit the block is still there but uh, um, by continuing doing it as a group uh, this perseverance um, um, my sense is that this over the over the weeks and months and years it gains substance mm -hmm. yeah Thank you, Judy. Thank you. This is Margot again. And, and as you were both speaking, um, I'm reminded of a sloka, Master, and I believe it's in Fiery World 2, where he says that the light doesn't destroy the darkness. The light is, we'll say, standing steady. And as the darkness approaches it, it destroys itself. 
so I'm also seeing the council chamber as that steady light and mm -hmm. that steady white light. And we make forays out of it, I suppose, into, into the astral or into the dark cloud. But that's there. It was actually in the in the meditation of the cloud. It was like I was reminded of being in a like in a spaceship and I'm going out to do some kind of mission to do some work on something outside on, on the moon or something and then back into the spaceship. So, but that ship is always there. That light is always there standing. We stand within that light, within that council chamber. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? Can you hear? Yeah, so I see myself unmuted and hear other people speaking. This is very interesting. This is Sabina from Germany. Um, let me perhaps add some thoughts. They were inspired by the meditation as well as the sharings before me. So thank you, Uta, and the whole group for again and again uh, forming together this really holy and healing space of the lab, which I experienced to start my impression today when focusing in the group and in the circle, for me it's a circle, I really felt this in, invitation from our ashrami co-workers to look from inside through the third eye outside in the in the in the world, in the earth field and the planetary field and also in the universe field. So this was like a common breathing and common looking from through our third eye, each mm -hmm. one through the own and there is also a third eye of, of our group. So this was quite a new and very intense um, starting point. Looking to this uh, cloud quoted by the Tibetan, um, I felt it like a cloud which is forming for a long time. And I, I remember to Helen's Middle Ages impression in this area and this is like a like a fire which is suppressed so now we have two actual uh sparkling points where it is not suppressed it's really burning so it's a very dark and um yeah a dark cloud but there is a lot of smoke for for more than 100 years over these areas from suppressed fires and when we stick to the to this thought form and to the natural knowledge inside our hearts that every every human being is sacred, every life is sacred, every human life is sacred. For me, it is quite logical that also the unit every human being is referring to is sacred and is to be respected. And my impression was a very practical one that the idea of superpower, the thought form of superpower and nations really has to be re-looked and verified or even um, not verified. How, how you say, what is the country of verified? I don't know the English word. Because... Re you mean re because, Yeah, you Yeah, we really have to look at this if superpower and nationality is really working to go into the future mm -hmm. and especially this area is the the whole eastern europe is is a consequence of different superpowers which took over not respecting the natural units and during this watching in this area i felt so much a pain between natural developing from inside in natural units and political overwhelming and overpowering from outside for political and power motivation. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is really something which touches not only this area, uh, maybe Western Europe has not this dramatic uh, development at the moment, but these concepts 
the first time very clear for me seemed to be really relooked and analyzed and maybe sorted out as an old way which makes impossible to sacred to sacred to to keep sacred every human life and the unit where every human wants to be belong to hmm. i felt i felt a very release while um breathing together with every human life and i felt that breathing together at once creates a relation a real natural relation because the whole breathing is like the rhythm of the universe we share everywhere in the world no matter where we are mm -hmm. and this breathing together um, can go under this cloud and can reach every every single being mm -hmm. and for me it, for me it's like uh, um like hierarchy is so much um supporting the process of at least it's a it's a psychosynthesis of the of the groups of people yeah and i i don't like to say the nations because after this impression i have problems to think in nations mm -hmm. I, I think really in natural units and every unit is sacred sacred thank you yeah. lots of things to think things through thank you sabina so rich mm -hmm. what you said breathing together can go under the cloud it's as if you know this cloud this karma manasic mess is superimposing itself on on our humanness and the breathing is the humanness is this what what alexander also said this etheric heaviness is um the yeah. breathing on the etheric level so this is outside of ideologies and 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 all this mess mm -hmm. yeah thank you maybe under such clouds people really have difficulties the human people human beings have difficulties to breath yeah. but breathing together is yeah is much more is the ruch is 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 supporting well it's a soul right Yeah, anyone else would like to share before we close? Oh, I see Gillian. Um. And you are self muted, so if you wish to speak, you have to unmute yourself. Can you unmute yourself, Gillian? Oh, here you oh. go. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, my thoughts were about relationships that came to me and probably it's a bit late for the present uh, wars that are going on, but ideally 
every individual group or nation should meet others with an open mind and not have preconceived ideas about the other. When faced with hostility, they should react with love, being aware that fear may be ruling the other. And I think the fears that are involved in these conflicts at the moment, they're all worrying the other nation is going to swallow up their nation. And um, they put on this protective uniform um, of hostility to uh, try and thinking it might help them to uh, save it themselves. And they all forget in that process that each person is sacred. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, to, uh, we, when we are in trauma, it is difficult to hold, to, to, um, to hold on to the humanness of the other. You make, you make the, 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 your opponent into an other. And then there is this block of mistrust that Judy said. And then we cannot, we cannot perceive each other anymore as humans. Yeah, so we have tried one way to deal with dark clouds. I can really sense the heaviness of this assignment, of this experiment here. Um, but it seems we must, we must uh, uh, address this, these dark clouds, these murky clouds and uh, use our skills as far as they go um, yeah to play our part and good that we have each other to to learn this together okay there's no one else who would like to speak Mm. Darcy. Are you on mute? Okay. Please, Darcy, unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you. I was moved before we entered the cloud or observed the cloud to bring to the group and affirmed the affirmation of the will. Mm -hmm. And worked from that place, observing within the council chamber, which you said we do not move from there. And that is from the place I worked. And it was a viewing from above down. Yeah. Surrounded in that will of God. Implementing what we did with that will by love. Mm -hmm. So that supported my ability to hold a higher frequency within that space of simply sending seated light forms into that dense, dark thought form that we were working with. Yeah, thank you. The affirmation of the will. The group will. Mm. 
that was bringing then the circle into the geometry and standing at that point of the center of the will of God. I stand, not shall deflect my will from his. I implement that will by love. I turn towards the field of service. I, the triangle divine, work out that will within the square and serve my fellow men. Yes. We were utterly protected within our council chamber. Nothing could penetrate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Darcy. That's a good, a good closure. Thank you, everyone. Um, before we do a, a very small uh, closing alignment, just would like to say our next lab session, Nations Lab session is on the 26th of December. So say already goodbye and uh, we go into a little closing meditation. So let us hold for another moment our shared flame of the will to love, will to right relations. We are standing in love and in will. And let it pour through each of us into our own nation. And onwards, see it flowing into the entire field of the family of nations. And we affirm the will to right relations between all nations. Sending this out, this message. Right relations between all nations. All groups of people. And returning to our own personal field now to our physical surroundings and letting our light shine and grounding it as a blessing into our earth. Oh.